Okay, today I want to talk about inflation. And to go back and think about inflation, we'll use the example of the money machine. This money machine, like we had before, is going to pay me $10,000 in exactly one year. And I found someone who's willing to buy that machine and pay me $9,130 today. So if I look at that on a timeline, it's going to look a little bit like this. Somebody gave up 9130 today, and they're going to receive $10,000 in one year. My question is, why? Why would you do that? Your first answer may be because you make a profit of $870, right? Because you say, well, 10000 minus 9130 is $870. I made an $870 profit. I would say that, and I want you to think about it that way. I want you to think about this. You've given up today, not not $9,130, but you've given up whatever this money will buy. So you've reduced your consumption today by this amount. So imagine going to a store and filling up a grocery cart, you know, with everything that you would want to buy with a 9,130. You can't do that, and you wait for a year to get the 10,000. Why did you do that? Because you will have more stuff in that grocery cart with the $10,000 in a year than you would have with the 9,130 today. So what you're doing is you want to increase what I'll call your real return. Real return, think of things that you can buy, you can put in that cart. Um, you will increase your overall satisfaction with your consumption because you will have more stuff in a year than today. But we all know in general prices go up. So you don't make, you don't have $870 uh, worth of additional stuff. There are two portions of this. Part of that is a real return. Part of that is inflation. So I can think of the, the equation this way. I know 1 plus, let me give you some terminology here. 1 plus R, capital R, I'm going to call that the nominal return. So in other words, if I go through here and I do this equation, you know, future value equals present value times 1 plus r to the t, you know, so this is the $10,000 equals the 9130 times 1 plus r to the first power. We're going to have an interest rate of 9.529%. Um, Let me double check that. But I want to say this interest rate has two components to it. This is what I call the nominal return. But there are two things going on. There is 1 plus little r, and little r I will call the real return times 1 plus i. i is what I'll call inflation. So if I do a little algebra here, the nominal return is equal to the real return plus inflation plus real times inflation. So yeah, I'm gonna if, if I do this math over here, I know I'm gonna have an increase of 9.529%, but that doesn't make me 9.5% better off because part of my increase, part of this 870, part of my increase in wealth is uh, eaten away by inflation because prices have gone up. And this equation right here allows us to break that out. All right, so in general, uh, I don't know what the real return is. I don't know what inflation is. Because I'm looking today to a year forward. I don't know what, what inflation is going to be. So I could say, well, I know my nominal return is 9, let's just say 9%. I know my nominal return is going to be 9%. And I think inflation is going to be 4%. I'm not sure, but I think it's going to be 4%. So now I can just solve this equation, and that tells my real rate of return. All right, traditionally, uh, or it's commonly thought that the Federal Reserve wants to keep inflation at around 2%. So let's get rid of this. Yeah, let's get rid of this and come up with a new uh, equation. Okay, 
So we have this equation, and well, I don't know what inflation is going to be, but I know the Federal Reserve has kind of an unofficial target, inflation being 2%. I can look and think that the real interest rate long term in this country has been around 3%. The reason I pick these numbers is to show you the following. So if I want to calculate the nominal return, that would be 3% plus the 2% plus 3% times 2%. Now this number right here, it's really small. That's 0 .0006. So when I do this, my answer is 0 0.0506, which is about 5.06%. Some people will say, look, rather than doing the exact equation that we have here, let's do an approximate equa equation. The approximate equation, and I'll denote that with a squiggly equal sign, is going to be R plus I, which in this case is going to be 0 0.03 plus 0 0.02, this line should be a squiggly, that will be equal to 5%, which is not very different than 5.06%. So sometimes we want to be real exact, and we'll do this exact equation. Sometimes I'll just ask you for the approximate. And the reason is this last term right here generally is very small. Okay, so that's inflation. Let me show you one last concept for Chapter 2, and that will be it. So let's look on a timeline here, like we've had before. Um, we'll say that this is time 0, time 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you know this equation, um, future value equals present value times 1 plus r to the t. Now, what if I told you in year 2 we put $100 in an account and the account earns 10% and I want to know how much it's going to be worth at year 5. Now, now let's say well, the future value is a value in year 5. The present value is a value in year 2. Um, r is 10% T is how many steps I go. I go one, two, three steps. T is equal to three. So the value in your five is equal to 100 times 1.10 to the third. And you know that's going to be 133.10. Okay, let's look at this a slightly different way. So what if I said, look, I know that five years from today, I need to have a hundred dollars in my account. And I know I can't put any money in today. Can't do this, forget that. Can't do it in a year, I'm still in school. You know, but here I can deposit some money. So how much can I deposit at year two? Well, you know that present value is equal to future value over one plus r to the t. But Here's the problem. Present value doesn't literally mean present value. So exactly what time is that? Well, that's time two on the timeline. And future value means in the future, but how far in the future? In one year, two years, three years, five years, 20 years? So the reason I like to use these subscripts is now I can say the value at year two, present value just means before future value, and future value just means after present. So when does it occur precisely? I want to know how much to put in year two so I can have a certain amount in year five, one plus r, and I raise that to the third power because I'm going back one, two, three steps, just like I go forward three steps over here. So five minus two is three, five minus two is three. So I need $100 in three years at 10%. That means I need to put in 7513. Alright, so that's chapter 2. Work the problems and uh, then watch the videos.